Chapter 10. Part 1. Castle Montero. The sun was rising in Brashov after the battle with the priest and the zombies, and as always, the countess watched from the shadows as she longed to be able to walk in the sunlight. But this was a luxury not made for a vampire like herself. She was Countess Monica Montero, a descendant of the legendary Count Dracula, residing in Castle Montero in Transylvania. The castle stood on a hill, shrouded in mist and surrounded by ancient trees. The stone walls were weathered and covered in ivy, and the only sounds that could be heard were the eerie cries of the nocturnal creatures that called the castle home. Inside, the corridors were dark and musty, lit only by flickering candles that cast long shadows on the walls. Countess Montero's chamber was adorned with velvet curtains and antique furniture. Her coffin, a lavish mahogany piece, stood in one corner of the room, its lid closed to shield her from the approaching sunlight. The room was filled with the scent of blood and decay, a reminder of her immortal thirst that could never be quenched. As the Countess prepared to retire for the day, her eyes fell on a portrait of her ancestor, Count Dracula, hanging on the wall. The resemblance between them was striking, with their piercing eyes and regal features. She felt a sense of pride in her lineage, but also a heavy burden of loneliness that came with immortality. With a sigh, Countess Montero closed her eyes and drifted into a restless slumber, haunted by memories of her past and dreams of a future that seemed forever out of reach. The night was long, and the dark shadows of the castle seemed to whisper her name, beckoning her to embrace the darkness that lay within her soul. Chapter 10. Part 2. As the night deepened, Countess Montero's dreams grew darker and more twisted. Images of blood and death flashed through her mind, mingling with echoes of centuries-old whispers from her ancestors. The howling wind outside seemed to carry a sense of foreboding, as if warning of impending danger. Suddenly, a knock on the heavy oak door of her chamber jolted the Countess awake. She rose from her coffin, her senses alert and her fangs gleaming in the dim candlelight. Remington, her faithful servant, stood at the door, his eyes filled with concern. Countess, forgive the intrusion, but there is a visitor at the gates, Remington said, his voice trembling slightly. Countess Montero's curiosity was piqued. Visitors were rare at Castle Montero, especially at this late hour. She motioned for Remington to open the door, revealing a tall figure standing in the flickering torchlight. The man introduced himself as Dr. Robert Harrington, a physician from London who had traveled to seek the Countess's help in a matter of grave importance. He spoke of a mysterious contagion sweeping through the kingdom, claiming the lives of countless people. The source of the illness was unknown, and fear gripped the streets of London. Countess Montero listened intently, her mind racing with possibilities. She was well versed in the ways of blood and illness, with centuries of knowledge passed down through her bloodline. Perhaps this was her chance to use her powers for good, to help the living instead of feeding on them. With a nod, she agreed to accompany Dr. Harrington to London, her decision made in a split second. Remington watched in astonishment, his loyalty tested by the Countess's sudden change of heart. But deep down, he knew that his mistress was capable of more than just feeding on the innocent. As the clock struck midnight and the moon cast an ethereal glow over the castle, Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington set out on their journey to London, leaving behind the shadows of Castle Montero and venturing into a world filled with darkness and uncertainty. The howling of wolves echoed in the distance, a chilling reminder of the dangers that awaited them beyond the safety of their ancestral home. Chapter 11. Part 1. London Bound. The journey to London was long and arduous, with Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington traveling through dark forests and mist-shrouded moors. The Countess's senses were on high alert, her vampire instincts alerting her to the presence of danger lurking in the shadows. As they approached the outskirts of London, a sense of unease settled over the Countess. The city was cloaked in a thick fog, obscuring the grand buildings and bustling streets that usually defined the city. Dr. Harrington guided the Countess through the winding alleys and dimly lit lanes, 
leading her to the heart of the contagion that gripped the city. People moved about in a daze, their faces pale and drawn, their eyes glazed over with sickness. Countess Montero could smell the stench of death and decay in the air, a foul odor that made her recoil in disgust. She knew that whatever was causing this illness was malevolent and powerful, a force to be reckoned with. Dr. Harrington led the Countess to a makeshift hospital where the afflicted were being treated. The scene inside was one of chaos and despair, with patients writhing in pain and doctors scrambling to find a cure. Countess Montero's keen eyes scanned the room, her supernatural senses honing in on the source of the contagion. She approached a young girl lying on a cot, her skin ashen and her breath shallow. The Countess placed a hand on the girl's forehead, feeling the heat of the fever that ravaged her body. Closing her eyes, she tapped into her ancient knowledge, searching for the root of the illness that plagued the city. Suddenly, a vision flashed before her eyes, a dark figure cloaked in shadows and wielding a sinister power. The Countess gasped in shock, realizing that they were dealing not with a natural sickness, but with a supernatural force that threatened to consume all in its path. Dr. Harrington looked at the Countess, a mix of fear and hope in his eyes. He knew that only she, with her ancient powers and bloodline, could stand against this malevolent force. And so, with a determined glint in her eyes, Countess Montero prepared to face the darkness that lurked within the heart of London, ready to combat evil with all the strength and cunning of a vampire warrior. Chapter 11. Part 2. Leaving Dr. Harrington to tend to the sick and suffering in the makeshift hospital, Countess Montero ventured out into the fog-shrouded streets of London. Her senses were sharp, picking up on the faintest whispers of the malevolent force that gripped the city. She knew that she needed to act quickly to uncover the source of this darkness and put an end to it before it consumed London in its entirety. As she walked through the eerie streets, the Countess noticed a pattern among the afflicted. They all bore similar bite marks on their necks, as if they had been fed upon by some otherworldly creature. The realization sent a shiver down her spine, for she knew all too well the mark of a vampire's fangs. Following the trail of the mysterious bite marks, Countess Montero soon found herself standing before an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city. The air around the building felt heavy with the presence of evil, making her skin crawl with unease. Stealing herself, the Countess pushed open the creaking door and entered the dimly lit interior. The sound of whispers filled the air, echoing off the walls and sending a chill down her spine. Countess Montero moved cautiously through the warehouse, her eyes scanning the shadows for any sign of the creature responsible for spreading the contagion. Suddenly, a figure stepped out from the darkness, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light. It was a vampire, ancient and powerful, with a twisted smile on its pale face. The Countess recognized the creature as one of her own kind, corrupted by darkness and driven by an insatiable hunger for blood. Without hesitation, she launched into action, her speed and agility unmatched as she engaged in a fierce battle with the vampire. Claws and fangs clashed, sending sparks flying through the air as the two vampires fought for supremacy. Countess Montero's years of experience as a warrior served her well, allowing her to anticipate her opponent's every move and strike with precision. The warehouse became a battleground, echoing with the sounds of their struggle. With a final, decisive blow, Countess Montero emerged victorious, standing over the fallen vampire with a sense of grim satisfaction. She knew that the battle was far from over, but she had taken the first step in ridding London of the malevolent force that threatened to consume it. As she stepped out of the warehouse, the Countess felt a sense of resolve wash over her. She knew that her journey was far from over, and that more challenges lay ahead. But with Dr. Harrington by her side and her own strength and determination, she was ready to face whatever darkness awaited her in the shadows of London. Chapter 12. Part 1. Zombies in the Mix. The sun had set over London, casting long shadows across the city as Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington regrouped after the battle with the vampire. 
The Countess's senses were on high alert as she scanned the darkened streets, searching for any signs of the malevolent force that still lingered in the city. Dr. Harrington looked at the Countess with a mixture of awe and gratitude, his eyes filled with newfound respect for her abilities. He knew that without her guidance and strength, they would have stood no chance against the vampire that had been spreading the contagion. Thank you, Countess, Dr. Harrington said, his voice filled with sincerity. I never would have believed in the existence of such creatures if I hadn't witnessed your prowess firsthand. Countess Montero nodded, her expression serious. There are many things in this world that remain hidden from human eyes, Doctor. It is my duty to protect humanity from the darkness that lurks in the shadows. As they made their way back to the makeshift hospital, a sense of urgency weighing heavy on their hearts, a sudden commotion broke out in the streets ahead. People were screaming and running in panic, their faces twisted in terror. Countess Montero's keen senses immediately picked up on the source of the disturbance a horde of zombies, animated by a malevolent force that sought to spread death and destruction. Without hesitation, Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington sprang into action, facing the undead horde with steely determination. The Countess's vampire strength and speed proved to be invaluable as she dispatched the zombies with swift, precise strikes. Dr. Harrington, though initially taken aback by the sight of the living dead, quickly followed her lead, using his medical knowledge to find weaknesses in the zombies' decayed bodies. The battle raged on through the night, the streets of London echoing with the sounds of combat. Countess Montero felt her blood sing with the thrill of the fight, knowing that she was standing between the innocent and the forces of darkness that threatened to engulf them all. As the last of the zombies fell to the ground, lifeless once more, Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington stood victorious, their breath coming in ragged gasps. The Countess knew that their battle was far from over, but in that moment, she felt a sense of pride in knowing that she had protected London from the horrors that had plagued it. The night may have been dark and filled with peril, but with her strength and Dr. Harrington's determination, they were ready to face whatever darkness awaited them in the shadows. Chapter 12 Part 2 as the last echoes of battle faded into the night, Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington surveyed the aftermath of the confrontation with the zombies. The streets were littered with the remains of the undead, their foul stench lingering in the air. The Countess's senses were on high alert, searching for any sign of the malevolent force that had animated the zombies and threatened the city. Dr. Harrington looked at the Countess with a mixture of awe and admiration his eyes shining with newfound respect. You truly are a warrior, Countess. I never would have imagined such creatures existed, let alone that I would have the honor of fighting alongside one. Countess Montero inclined her head in acknowledgement, her expression grave. The darkness that lurks in the shadows is a constant threat, Doctor. It is my duty to protect humanity from the forces of evil that seek to destroy them. With a shared sense of purpose, Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington set out to uncover the source of the malevolent force that had plagued London. Their journey took them through dark alleyways and abandoned buildings, following a trail of destruction left in the wake of the zombies. As they delved deeper into the heart of the city, the Countess's vampire senses detected a familiar scent the unmistakable aroma of death and decay that signaled the presence of another vampire. She knew that they were drawing closer to the true source of the darkness that had gripped London. Finally, they arrived at an abandoned cathedral on the outskirts of the city, its crumbling walls shrouded in darkness. Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington entered cautiously, their footsteps echoing in the empty space. As they moved further into the cathedral, a figure emerged from the shadows of vampire, ancient and powerful, with eyes that gleamed with malevolence. The Countess's instincts went on high alert as she recognized the vampire as an old foe, one whose thirst for power had driven him to unleash chaos upon the city. With a fierce determination, Countess Montero prepared to face her enemy in a battle that would determine the fate of London and all who dwelled within its boundaries. The time for action had come, and the Countess was ready to confront the darkness head-on, with all the strength and cunning of a vampire warrior.
Chapter 13. Part 1. An Ancient Foe. Countess Montero stood face to face with the ancient vampire, her eyes locked with his in a silent exchange of challenge and determination. The cathedral seemed to pulse with dark energy, the air thick with tension as the two powerful beings prepared to engage in a battle that would decide the fate of London and all who dwelled within its boundaries. The ancient vampire, known as Lord Malachi, smirked as he surveyed the Countess and Dr. Harrington with a mix of amusement and malice. Ah, Countess Montero, he sneered, his voice dripping with contempt. I see you have come to challenge me once again. How quaint. Countess Montero's fangs gleamed in the dim light of the cathedral as she spoke, her voice low and commanding. Your reign of terror ends here, Malachi. The people of London will be free from your malevolent influence. With a swift movement, Lord Malachi lunged at the Countess, his speed and strength matching her own. The two vampires clashed in a whirlwind of claws and fangs, their movements so fast that it was impossible for the human eye to follow. Dr. Harrington watched in awe and horror, his mind struggling to comprehend the supernatural battle unfolding before him. Countess Montero fought with all the skill and ferocity of a seasoned warrior, her instincts honed by centuries of combat. She knew that Lord Malachi was a formidable opponent, his powers rivaling her own. But she was driven by a sense of duty and a desire to protect the innocent, and she would not falter in her quest to bring an end to the darkness that threatened London. As the battle raged on, the cathedral shook with the force of their blows, sending debris falling from the crumbling walls. Countess Montero and Lord Malachi seemed evenly matched, each refusing to back down in the face of their opponent's relentless attacks. Dr. Harrington, feeling a surge of courage and determination, looked around the cathedral for anything that could aid them in their battle. His eyes fell on a shaft of sunlight piercing through a broken window, its golden rays illuminating the darkened interior. An idea sparked in his mind, a glimmer of hope in the face of overwhelming odds. With a steely resolve, Dr. Harrington leaped into action, grabbing a piece of stained glass from the shattered window and using it to reflect the sunlight towards Lord Malachi. The ancient vampire let out a blood-curdling scream as the sunlight made contact with his skin, his body recoiling in agony. Countess Montero seized the opportunity, launching herself at Lord Malachi with renewed vigor. With a final, decisive strike, she delivered the finishing blow that sent the ancient vampire crashing to the ground, his body withering and dissolving into dust. The battle was over, and London was safe once more from the darkness that had threatened to consume it. Countess Montero and Dr. Harrington stood side by side, their breath coming in ragged gasps as they surveyed the aftermath of their victory. But as they caught their breath and looked towards a future free from the malevolent influence of Lord Malachi, a new threat began to stir in the shadows, promising more challenges and dangers to come. The Countess knew that her battle against the forces of darkness was far from over, and that she would need to summon all of her strength and cunning to protect humanity from the horrors that lurked in the night. You've been listening to a short story. The Countess Monica Montero. Vampire. A story by Butch Leak. For more of our stories log into Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, or the Clubhouse website at www.clubhousepodcastradiotoday.com. For our printed books, visit www.blurb.com user Ventura 11. My name is Kendra, thank you for stopping in.